Connecting uh, text, spam versus spam by Ethan Liu, Patrick Kwan, Charlie Tang, Kunyaki, and me. Text message classifier will enhance productivity via text by determining whether they need to be ignored, like spam messages, or our everyday texts. Although there are spam detectors made, we concluded that we wanted to develop a better model since we still regularly receive spam text messages that aren't filtered out. Wait, next slide. Okay, yeah, we prioritize convenience because we receive lots of texts and sometimes we could be too busy to check them. And even if we can, there are elders or people with disabilities who aren't as accustomed to texting, so they won't be able to tell spam from ham. For example, someone's grandfather could get scammed out of his life savings to a robot. No one wants that to happen. Plus, spammers are becoming smarter by the day, so we found a way to prevent that with this product. Next. And some old ideas we had during initial planning, we wanted a model that listens to a song and tells you the name of it, but the AI doesn't know sound. So we try ranking text messages by urgency, like having a hospital checkup tomorrow or a birthday party in a week, but we couldn't really find a data set for that. Another idea was to connect symptoms with diseases to cures, but this idea will be too difficult to build in three weeks. Lastly, we had a model that detects what emotions relate to text messages. And this one actually went really well, but the data was really inaccurate and the model can't handle more than five emotions. So obviously we did spam and ham. And basically the sum of our difficulties was the data sets and model refusing to collaborate and some practical ideas and development. Next. First of all, we needed to choose an API which we wanted to use. After a bit of thought, we decided on Keras due to its popularity, speed, and ability to create strong deep learning models. One type of model that Keras offers is the sequential model, which is built layer by layer and is perfect for our tasks of test metric spam detection and the easiest to build with Keras. Next. So as for the data, Patrick and I found data sets online on websites such as Kaggle and Google Dataset Search, and we then applied those back to our model. We, we have a lot of touched but unused data sets for our, our scrapped plans like the sentiment detector because they would result in unbalanced data. And we arranged the data into a Python pandas data frame, which would convert each message into an array of indices for the AI model to understand. Next. This is a link to the main database we used for the spam versus ham project. And we, uh, yeah, we had a lot more, but we had to discard them because they weren't working well with our model. Uh, after pre-processing the data, we created a deep neural network using Keras to find patterns in the data and detect which messages were spam. Creating the model was no easy task, however, and took hours of research and troubleshooting before it finally worked. Um, when coding the model, we encountered many errors. These were all eventually resolved, but made the process of creating the model more difficult, but made finishing it that much more rewarding. The model asks the user to type in a text message. The spam versus ham model will detect whether your texts are spam or ham. Quinn will demonstrate the model in a little bit. The model applies complicated mathematical algorithms to over 400,000 variables known as weights to classify the message. Um, the model was only trained on 80% of the data and the other 20% was used to test how well the model was performing. Our model has an accuracy of 98%, which is the percentage of uh, messages it identifies correctly, and has a loss of under 0 0.075, which is how far it is away from being perfect is a pretty respectable score. Um, okay. and... Although we are satisfied with the model, we still want to improve it. Next time we would like to find a larger data set with an even balance of spam and ham since you could see from the model, the ham is biased compared to the spam. We would use more advanced techniques to improve the accuracy of our models as well. In addition, we would like to develop the model into a mobile lab which automatically checks all of one's tests for spam instead of manually inputting each message into our website. Quinn is now going to demonstrate our model. Uh, um, so if we go to the website, um, and the website has like an overview of our presentation as well, like motivations, 
like the timeline, how we worked on it, everybody on the team, um, at the top, the actual application, <laughs> like you can input a message to call them now to claim your free iPad, and that will result in um, that will result in it being classified as spam. But if you say so learn AI from scratch in three weeks, then um, it will it will detect not spam. We we should try a few messages we sent to AI camp students. Isabella was actually posting that. Let's try that. Um. Okay. Probably. Um. It's too long, maybe. Probably spam because it has like the message and data rates may apply and stop to cancel. I, oh, I'm guessing. Hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, whatever. Let's try that. Let's try that. Yeah. Okay. It's spam. All right. What about uh? What if you get rid of the message and data rates may apply that kind of thing? Um. My my guess would be just less certain um, that it's spam, but uh, we can try this. Yeah, let's try it. Okay, so that's actually the difference. It's just messaging data rates. Wow. Uh, help for help and stop to cancel. Wow. So. But this is IRS. <laughs> um, does anybody have any any questions? I had um <laughs> the IRS. I had put my question in chat. Uh oh, okay, you responded. Thank you. Okay, can we give this thing a round of applause? This is real world applications. It's very accurate, it looks like, right? Wait, Got a, you know, design can improve definitely, but you know, everything else looks great. Okay, awesome.